There was a queue for electric furnaces at Kaligat Crematorium on the 11th of October. Ritvik did not know how long he had to wait before one became available. You have to wait like everyone else. No corpse is privileged over the other. You can't hurry death. Do you understand? He was told by one of the furnace attendants, as if he had asked to jump the queue when all he'd wanted to know was how long it would take. He reasoned he would much rather a longer wait for he did not want to go through that bristling panoply of rituals before the sliding rails carried his mother's body into the heart of fire, in full cleansing view of everyone. When the moment arrived, he knew he had been dreading it, with a cold, randomly clutching and unclutching grip in his bowels. His mother's body had been laid out on a criss-cross frame of cheap wood that formed a ramshackle stretcher, secured to it with rough coir ropes and covered with a white, coarse sheet. Her head had been left exposed. It nodded and lolled like a floppy doll's as the stretcher was placed in front of one of the three furnaces that would ultimately devour her. The Brahmin priest was already there, more a harried figure doing brisk business than a sombre religious person. A distracted, infinitely bored look had seeped its way into his stubbly face through years of practice in the death trade. It was an irremovable mask now, his only skin. His eyes were the yellow of mangled fried eggs, and he had foul breath. Are you wearing any animal products? You'll have to remove them, he said to Ritvik. What animal products? Leather? Ritvik wasn't sure what he had to remove. Yes, leather, wool, anything made with horn. You will have to take off your shirt as well. From the complete absence of tone, he might as well have been reading out a lesson he had taught every day for decades to a bunch of vapid children. Ritvik undid his borrowed watch. The strap was made of leather and handed it to his brother, Aritra. He then took off his shirt and stood there, naked to the waist. What about the belt? Is that made of leather? the priest asked. Those sick yellow eyes didn't miss a thing. Yes, I think it is, Ritvik said. But I can't take it off. My jeans are three sizes too big for me. If I remove it, they'll just slip off. There was the noise, no, not even noise, but the atmospheric charge of a dutifully suppressed titter of shock around him. As the priest grudgingly assented or ignored, he could not figure out which. He was handed a bundle of burning faggots and asked to circle his mother seven times and touch the barely burning straw and twigs to her grey face every time he reached her head during the circling. 